the 10. Carry on Addis breaks their hearts again. Pulley clear in the closing stages. Smart Call wins the JMB Met. And Smart Call comes home to win it in the main John's Farms Paddock Stakes. Hello and welcome to Breeding to Win, right off the back of a fantastic Champions Day. Not the greatest results for punters, but it was so great to see so many different faces on the podium. Congratulations to Robbie Sage for winning the Grade 1 Premier's Champions Challenge with Coral Fever. What a fantastic win. To Joey Ramsden for his first and third in the Grade 1 Computer Form Sprint, a great training achievement and to Gary Alexander for producing Hero's Honor at his best to win the Grade 1 SA Derby, as well as all the other winning connections. It was a truly special day. Well, now it's time to take a look at what we've got in store for you on tonight's show. My studio guests tonight are Andrew and Ashley Fortune, Fee catches up with Adrian Todd, and we find out more about Royal Mo and the latest syndication offer for Always in Charge. Nine lots broke the six-figure mark on what was a solid day of trade for the Tattersall's Guineas Breeze Up and Horses in Training Sale. It was Alistair Donald of Sackville Donald Bloodstock, the leading buyer at the Craven Breeze Up Sale, who signed for the top lot on the day, giving 200,000 guineas for a filly by Tamiers. Seeing off stiff competition from underbidders Eamon Riley of BBA Island and trainer David O'Mara, the well-bred sister to the Rockfell runner-up Fadayil from Lynn Lodge Stud is set to join trainer Andrew Balding. It was another filly who hit the headlines later in the Breeze Up section of the sale, this time an offering by Shamadale from Horton Bloodstock. The filly, who hails from the family of this weekend's 2000 Guineas contenders Gustav Klimt and James Garfield, was knocked down to Matt Coleman of Stroud Coleman Bloodstock for 155,000 Guineas. Names to regularly feature on the lists of leading Breeze Up buyers are those of Stephen Hillen and trainer Kevin Ryan, who having enjoyed notable success at the two-year-old sales in the past, swooped again to secure a Lope de Vega colt for 145,000 guineas. 
Consigned like previous breeze-up successes for the pair, the Grey Gatsby and Astaire by Grove Stud, the half-brother to Group 3 winner Nargis was a notable pinhook success for the operation, who paid just €66,000 for the colt last year. Charlie Gordon Watson also made his presence felt on the day, signing for two lots, including a Dutch art colt out of Group 1 runner-up Lady Darshan. The Church Farm and Horse Park stud offering was bought for the increasingly active Dr. Johnny Hon to join trainer Gay Kellaway's Newmarket String. Well, he's a well bred horse, the first foal um, by Street Riser listed winner, and, and a black type, obviously. The, she's got a uh, Kodiak yearling, which is a high chaparral. She's a very good race mare, trained by Stan Moore. She's second in the Phillies Mile. I remember her being sold here out of training for, I think, 600,000 to new source. Dutch Art's a reliable stallion, but he's just a very nice type with a nice pedigree and a good attitude and a nice horse. He's going to Gay Calloway for Dr. Johnny Hon's global racing venture. Hope for the best from here. It was no surprise to see the only offering by the late Scat Daddy attract plenty of interest, with the final offering by the standout sire to sell at this year's Breeze Ups, selling to Michael Donoghue and the Yulong investment team for 120,000 guineas. The Church Farm and Horse Park stud Colt had been led out of the ring unsold at $75,000 as a yearling, before being snapped up by Mr Zhang to join his growing string in Ireland. Another successful pinhook on the day was Lot 137, a Havana Gold colt from Oak Tree Farm, who having been bought by Mags O'Toole for 42,000 guineas at Book 3 of the Tattersall's October yearling sale, sold to agent Ross Doyle for 105,000 guineas. Lovely type, good mover, big strong horse, um, did a nice breeze, um, I'm delighted to get him. He's gone to Jim Boyle for a client of Jim, so it's fantastic, he's, he's come from a good home, he's a nice horse, he's a very good stallion and uh, the dam's pedigree backs up as well. She's bred two black type horses, so we're very excited about them. 105,000 guineas was the price also paid by Blanford Bloodstock for lot 249, a far colt from Bushy Park Stables, who was bought by Matt White for just 18,000 guineas as a yearling, before realising over six times that amount at today's sale. As always on the eve of the Kipco Guineas Festival, the sale attracted international buyers, including the Dubai-based Hikesh Parmar. I've always liked coming to the Guineas sale. I've, came, I've come to the, the Craven as well, and uh, it's just a nice sale, basically. And I've, I've bought some previous horses here. Um, we've had some, you know, some great days out with them. Um, and it's just been a very lucky sale for me, so I'm back again. The one that I bought today, uh, it's an exchange rate filly, and she's going to shuttle to Dubai. And the plan really is to um, give her the summer off now and the name for the, uh, the UAE Guineas. I'm based in the UK, uh, but I have horses in Dubai with Satish Shimar at Zabil Stables. I've never had a filly to take over there, so today I came to buy a filly, and she was my top lot, and I never thought I was going to get her, so I'm so happy that I did get her, um, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun with her. I've been coming here for a couple of years now. I had a lot of success out of this place. Uh, I bought a horse called Grandisar. He won the Winter Derby. He was very lucky for us, you know. He, he won 10 races, he was second 13 times. I bought a nice Kodiak. As everyone else, I think we're dreaming for Royal Ascot, but uh, it's an ambitious plan, but uh, I hope it comes through. Um, I've got a couple of more orders to fulfill as well, so hopefully um, uh, I'll be able to buy them. And, um, they're mainly for Dubai-based clients. They'll race here, and then uh, depending on how good they are and what they actually need, we'll place them somewhere else. As the curtain came down on the breeze-up season for another year, Tattersall's marketing director Jimmy George gave his assessment of this year's sale. Well, I think in the context of last year's sale, it's, it's been solid enough. Last year's Guineas Breeze Up and Horses and Training Sale was a, was a runaway wide margin record on, you know, across the board, turnover, average, median, clearance rate. It was an extraordinary sale. And uh, there was always going to be a hard one to follow, and especially with a catalogue significantly larger, which can you know raise issues and put a little bit of a strain on the uh, on the market but look this was the second highest turnover ever at this sale there were nine six figure lots which compares pretty well with last year as well average and median held up extremely well a little bit shy on the clearance rate the, the one disappointing feature but uh, as i say numbers 
play a part in, in that particular respect. I think it was great to see a uh, very diverse international participation. We we're very pleased to see uh, a lot of Greeks, Spaniards, Italians active at all levels of the market for the horses in training and the breeze up two-year-olds as well and a lot of people from the from the Gulf region as ever and they're an important part to this market. So now all in all a, a, a solid enough sale as usual the consignors did a fantastic job there were some great pin hooking successes international trade from start to finish and uh, turnover second only to last year's extraordinary level. Another trainer that enjoyed Champions Day glory at Turfantine last Saturday was Ashley Fortune, who trained her very first winner as a trainer, but not only that, she saddled the Grade 3 Gold Bowl winner, Let It Rain. Ashley, Andrew Fortune, great to have you in the studio. My first question to you, has reality set in, Ash? Does it ever? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bit surreal, but it's, yeah, it's nice to, to have actually saddled a winner, let alone a, a grade winner. Yeah, I, no, I don't think my cloud's coming down for a while. Andrew, obviously new things for you because yeah, you've never really been part of the training scene. You've always been the one on top. I suppose you're still the one on top, but um, how's this experience been for you? Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, Jules. It's like a little bit, uh, not something I would have picked, put it that way. Too many hiccups, Jules. You know, I used to get on horse, get off it. If I spoke the truth or a bit of crap, you know what I mean? I went back in the jockey room now, nah, like behind the scene, that's reality. Mm. Horses come with joints. They cast themselves in the box. They don't eat the night before. They got a temperature. So many things can go wrong and yeah. It's tough. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> easy. It's not <laughs> I, I must confess, Ash has been very great because I believe women are better with horses than men mm. because they got more patience. They mm. got more. Um, got, We've got uh, the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, it's, it's, I really believe that horses respond better to women than, than men and I really mm. do. So it's, I suppose, Quite a good balance between the two of us. Ash, I want to come back to you because obviously this has been a dream of yours to train for many years. When and how did it all begin for you? Uh, yeah, I started working in a racing yard at 18, just as I left school uh, for Garth Davis. He's uh, sadly immigrated to Australia, but he, he kind of put my toe in the water and, and said, come and, come and have a dabble at this. And if you like it, then you can give me a hand. And well, yeah, Duck to water, I just loved it and just went from there. Yeah, I've worked for a couple of trainers in Zim and then obviously m met Andrew, moved down here and then w I didn't have the luxury of being in a stable obviously with the kids coming to live with us and having, having mm. a, a child of our own. But now with Andrew on the sidelines, I just said, you know what, you might not like to be in racing anymore but I'm going to give it a go. And he said, okay. I'll let you go because otherwise you're not going to stop. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where we are and how we got you. And it all happened very soon. I mean, your decision was made and you literally got your trainer's license pretty much in two weeks. Yeah, I wrote the exam much to Andrew's disgust. I don't think he was very keen on the idea of me going for it, but I just, yeah, I just went for it and thankfully passed and they gave me the license. And within two weeks of the, the license coming through our, well no, before actually, the, the horses were in the yard two weeks before the license came through. So I yeah, know it was very fast, it, quite a whirlwind, but I mean, anyone who knows Andrew knows that nothing is a, at a Slow. snail's pace. Mm -hmm. It's everything is a whirlwind and, and that's how we roll. And obviously, a couple of weeks later, you settled up your first winner. I mean, cause that's literally what it was. Yeah, right time, right place, and very fortunate enough to be given an opportunity from, from Hassan Adams and Dale Lynch mm. and Sammy. I mean, we're very, very grateful to them for, for them trusting us, being a complete, I mean, I'm an unknown to them. Thankfully, Andrew's ha had a good relationship with them and through Daryl Hodgson and, and Dun Katz, they, you know, they trusted us with the horses. And yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for them, we probably still wouldn't have a score on the board. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's nice that people, people are trusting us with their horses. You obviously need the support, Andrew, and obviously now with you not riding, let's just quickly touch on your injury because you had a knee replacement and how is that doing? I mean, I, I think a lot of your fans who missed your interview on Saturday probably are sitting here with bated breath thinking, are you going to be back riding? I had my first knee up at 22, I think, and then won it. Could have been 30. I think this was my first knee up. Sure. Mm. So, Jules. I'm not that well bred, you know. I'm, I'm just looking at your stomach a little bit. <laughs> Jules, listen to me. It's, 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 <laughs> if my knee was okay, mm. I've been in worse positions and I've come back.
too right. No, we know that. But Jules, God, I've had so many comebacks. I'm, I, I don't want to, you know, the, the last couple of falls I had, I mean, last season, I was city clear when I, when I, when I, and then for a while, I rode with a fracture in my back. Mm -hmm. I had to go for 12 injections every second day, I think for a month before I rode Kangaroo Jack, because I wanted to ride Kangaroo Jack in one of the features, and I had a fracture in my back. And after Kangaroo Jack won, the woman still said to me, are you going to stop now? I said, are you joking? I'm 32 clear on the log. I, I want to be champion. And then I think a meeting or two later, a horse fell on me and broke my mm. ribs on both sides. So like, you know, I fell off the one morning at track and saw stars. That never used to happen to me, you know. It's, all my kids have seen me ride, you know. My grandchildren have seen me ride. What am I still going to prove? You know, I've been champion and, and I'll, t I'll leave it while it's a bit high, you know what I mean? I, 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 I must confess, I, I don't really want to do it anymore. I don't mind running horse track. I love mm. horses, and uh, but uh, no, I don't want to do it anymore. So you are riding work at the moment for Ashley? Yeah, I ride work, but to a, I can't sit like a jockey to a degree. I can't pull mm. my arms up. I can't pull this foot, arm, a foot up that, uh, this knee up that high. And, and I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Mm. Uh, so you still got the feel. And I think for Ashley, for you especially, that's so important because you're getting the feedback and from such a professional and such a top horseman. Yeah, it's, it's nice because what I see, he confirms. And, and like sometimes I'll doubt myself and say, mm, did that really work like mm. that? And he'll come back and say, hmm, this really moved like that. I'm like, okay, cool. So at least we're on the same page and we, we can figure it out together. And if a horse has got a slight niggle, I've seen it, he's felt it, and we know where we're going and how, how, kind of how to sort it out. So it helps. It's actually a great relationship. Um, because a lot of husbands and wives can't actually work together and you kind of find that friction. But I think because you've both been in the industry for so long, this is your journey. And I think Andrew kind of respects that in a way. Yeah, he, he you know, is very, very great, uh, generous to, to give me this opportunity. And, and I think he does understand that everyone's entitled to a little bit of living your dream. Mm. And I mean, I don't think he wouldn't wouldn't support it. Uh, he's always been an advocate of supporting people, and I suppose it's just it's just a little bit of my time now. I mean, it's not that it's my time; it's our time, and and I'm glad that he's with me because there's no way so I'd cope in this 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 environment on my own. You know, I'm not strong enough, not even close to being strong enough to to deal with with the pressures of it. And Andrew's been far more experienced with with dealing with. Um, Mm. the ups and downs Gosh. of it than I am. So he, yeah, he supports me more in that way. I um, mean, you know, the horses are the easy part. Please believe me. It's, it's all the other things that go with it that make it tough. Absolutely. Okay, now let's chat about how many horses you got at the moment. Yeah, there's 21 at the moment. So obviously there's a couple of empty boxes, but yeah, we've got 20 nice, nice, 21 nice horses in the yard. And how many boxes have you got? So you, you're training 18. out of all? Yeah, oh, just love it. It is, I don't know why people say they don't like it. I mean, I'm, I'm very pro vol. I love it. It's, mm -hmm. in the, it's in the bush. The horses are in more natural environments. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, winter hasn't even started and I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> for body warmers and heaters. And, but yeah, the horses seem to really love it there. They can, they can have a play outside. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we've got 30 boxes at the vol. And you got 21 filled. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, this is new early days for you. And you've already got 21 horses. So Andrew's been doing a lot of PR. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah, Jules, yeah, listen to me. We all don't get the opportunity at Justin Snaith gets. Fall with your arse in, uh, in the butter. You, you know what I mean? These people that start with strings that Darkenstein support. And, you know, Justin took a string over from his father. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to take over a string. To, re to build a string from the bottom card and get people to support you. Thank God people kind of know me. Mm. I'm not scared to phone anybody. I'm not there to steal anybody's owners. Like mm. I phone one or two people, they say, but I'm happy where I am. I say, mm. no, don't misunderstand me. I don't want to take you away from where you are. I just want you to buy me a horse. That's all. You know what I mean? I'm not, I was grateful for Hassan. He sent us, I think, 14 or 15. Mm. Seven is gone. They were rubbish. Mm. I said, we can't win a race with these things. They. Mm. <laughs> They got no actions. They got nothing no, going just, for them. It, it ends up making the owner sour, and that's we kind of really don't want to do that anymore. You know, there, there's been too many people that have that have sat too long with horses that are are just keeping a box mm. full, and who wants that? You know, if, if the horse has got no ability, then you know it's got an ability somewhere else. Rather let it go and 
live in a paddock and be make a little girl happy or something. Yeah, so I'm 40, so we got rid of I said to Hassan, he said, send him to PE. I said, you don't understand me. These things won't win in PE. They're bad. <laughs> Get rid of them. They're rats. But if you want you know them to mean? go, then we'll send them. Uh, yeah, and we sent a couple to the, the, the thing. Listen to me, we're grateful for Hassan because we kind of had, because we bought, I think, eight or nine Cape Town horses. Mm -hmm. And the Cape horses take a little while to acclimatize mm -hmm. here. We ran two fairly early and <clears throat> came back. Their coats were off. And, and they were eating well, but and then Daryl said to me, uh, "Look, I've, I've worked for top I, I've ridden for top trainers. Mm -hmm. I rode for Dennis Dar, Charles Led, Alec Led, uh, Daryl Hodson. Who do I miss? Dominic Zaki. <laughs> 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 never kept me on a horse. Put me on once. You got beat. <laughs> never got to ride again. And, and, and yeah, now look, I was a stable jock to to a lot of top mm -hmm. Joey Ramson. I mean, and the nice thing of Saturday was as well that was winning Joey." I mean, he calls himself the king of stayers, and, and he was a brilliant, mm. he's a brilliant trainer with stayers. He's a brilliant trainer, never mind the stayers. And I could take a little piece out of his book. You know, Dennis Dreyer, brilliant for me, brilliant sprinter trainer. Mm. And, and, and I can tell you to the T what Dennis will do the last two weeks with those. Of course, I worked for him on two mm. occasions, probably three years, you know. So I've been around the block, and there's only one thing I know as horses. God gave me the special gift and, and it's, it's, it's just, I don't know why, I can just feel the horse and tell you. And she does physio as well. Mm. Like this morning I worked when I said, mm, not quite. And this afternoon I was going, we checked it out. And yes, yes, now yeah. I, I had a look at it, I found a little twig here. And, and, and that's a great thing. So you work great as a team, as we've touched on. But it's not only that. I mean, when you look at Let It Rain, you had another team member part of that. And Andrew, that must make you very proud to have your son, Aldo de Mayer, ride Ashley's first winner for the stable. Now, you know, Aldo started riding in work riders. He was, he was bad, Jules. He was bad, <laughs> eh? I, I used to be his father. I used to kind of close my eyes. Joey gave him one or two rides, and then he got his license, and Charlie gave him a big... And he rode winner after winner. Since he's won the Met, a couple of years back for Mrs. Platner, he's kind of... I could see him start coming forward. And... Uh, I used to grind him and grind him and say, can't you feel this, can't you feel that? And eventually the penny dropped. And today I'm proud eh, that he's a... I mean, he won on our filly in Port Elizabeth that we bought, mm. or that we have at, that we got with Alan. And, and that was like his kind of first winner for us. And I could ride one that, <laughs> that Ashley literally trained, you know, that was just... Uh, you know, we, we started watching the race on the, on the second floor, I think. Mm. And the time they came into the straight, we were on the ground, <laughs> running <laughs> towards the race. <laughs> but you were pretty <laughs> bullish, you guys, um, before the race, Ash. So you obviously had seen something with Let It Rain, and he had come through his preparation, even though you didn't have the horse very long. You knew how he should have looked and how his uh, progress had come on since he joined your yard. Yeah, he raced under uh, Dan Katz's name at the last night meeting mm. at Turfentain. And Andrew was bitterly disappointed because he finished six and, you know, he got tired. And I said, but wh what are we moaning about? This was a grass gallop for him for, for the run. And I said, let's just, let's just take a step back and see what he does after the race. If he eats, you know, if he's well and fresh or whatever. Anyway, I mean, the 2000s also flipping half a race course too short for him mm. as well. Um, and then we got him home and he, f he didn't stop eating. Andrew moans about how much the horse eats and, you know. But he's a happy horse and, and then about, I don't know, three or four days after that run, I always take him out because I, I love to play with him because he's just, he's such a big baby and he's such a gentle giant. And I took him out the one afternoon to let him eat some grass and just to give him a bit of t attention. And I took him to roll and as he jumped up, he freshed and played and then stood and just showed the world that, you know, he was mm -hmm. there. I said to Andrew, okay, you can start working this horse now because he's ready for you. And yeah, he just... He only improved with every bit of work we gave him because we did a couple of interval trainings with him and a couple of sprint ups and no, he just took it like he was born to do it. And obviously the race all panned out exactly ha as you guys had planned it. Yeah, I don't think it could have gone any better to be honest. Uh, I think the jocks were questioning Aldo's sanity for, for three quarters of the way around. Um, but yeah, I don't think anyone realised that he is such a big long striding mm -hmm. animal. and, and I mean, he got to do it his own way. Uh, I mean, how, how better can it go? And Aldo, I mean, hats off to him. He listened 
to every word. And before the race, he was very apprehensive. He says, oh my gosh, why did my dad make me watch these replays? <laughs> and I said, just please, just do me one thing. Just trust him. Just mm. trust the horse because he will give you everything. Just don't drop him out. Trust him. And he did that. And whatever Andrew told him to do, he did as well. So, yeah. No, yeah. Aldo rode brilliantly and the horse has done brilliantly. And he came out of the race so happy he's charging around the paddock the next morning screaming at the top of his voice that he was the king of turf and <laughs> uh, the violin <laughs> yeah i know we loved it so it's he's been he's been great first grade winner <laughs> first winner in in total <laughs> yeah, wrapped uh, up in one <laughs> wrapped up in one with aldo family affair so the dream is beginning yeah so on behalf of the breeding to win team we wish you all the very best as a team Andrew, I know we might not see you back in the saddle, but now you are still part of racing and that's great to have. And especially being part of Ashley's team, we know we're gonna certainly get to chat to you on course as well, which is always exciting yeah. as, <laughs> as we all know. So thank you both so much for your time and we wish you all the very, very best. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us, Jules. And yes, uh, we still got chairs for well available. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, sell, I'm gonna sell these horses, Julie. It's, it's, it's not that my, easy. My While PR I'm on the air, and, and yeah, no, Jules, just listen to me. One thing I'll guarantee you, if your horse is rubbish, at least you'll have a laugh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we won't make you feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us, Jules. Thank you very Thank much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Are we seeing another run, run, oh, run here? Let it rain as 12, 14, 16 lanes clear. Can he maintain this? Second place is still Kitty's Destiny. Then comes Odd Rob, just cruised in. Further back then to Storm Morning, the Elmo Effect and Cool Chardonnay. Let It Rain has got 250 meters left to go. The others an extra 20 meters. Second place has just cruised in. Kitty's Destiny further back to Storm Warning. Let It Rain still in front. The pack is coming. Just cruised in. Kitty's Destiny. It's still Let It Rain from Just Cruised In. Let It Rain. Unbelievable. Let It Rain did it for Ashley Fortune. Just cruised in second. Then came Kitty's Destiny. Fourth got close, Cool Chardonnay and Storm Warning are involved. Have you ever seen the larks? Well, Run Run O Run a few months ago went viral. This is completely different in the fact that it's been timed to the absolute decimal second. Let it rain to give Ashley Fortune her first winner Aldo Domeo, the winning jockey, what a gamble he's taken here. Let it rain has won this. He had a plane to catch. He's made it on time. No pressure, but we, we've loved every moment of it. The whole day has just been awesome, and I, I'm so proud of my horses. Whiskey Baron and Legal Eagle. It's Whiskey Baron who's claimed the advantage. No more from Legal Eagle. And Whiskey Baron goes on to win. Edict of Nantes is in front, the yellow cap. He's going on strongly. Nothing got a chance for him now. Edict of Nantes drawing away in the closing stages. Goes away to win it comfortably. Edict of Nantes going great guns from El Sahem. Horizons back third. Edict of Nantes from El Sahem. Edict of Nantes takes it to another level. Lady of the house. Lady of the house. Give me six on the inside. Lady of the house pulls it out. Captain America from trip to heaven. And Captain America going great guns, Captain America to shine. But the leader sail south, and it's sail south going on. Sail south will win it. Captain America second. Adrian Todd is currently heading up the import and export task team. The Breeding to Win team caught up with Adrian during his travels to find out about his progress regarding the protocols and how they're coming along. It's been a while since we caught up with Adrian Todd and got the latest update on South Africa's protocol. And it's very interesting this morning, I've taken a look at the recent video and the new brochure. And now, Adrian, it's lovely to be here this morning. You're now under a very official name of the South African Equine Health and Protocol. 
Yes, Fee, you know, it, um, we started out, or my involvement with this effort started out um, after the Budstock South Africa CTS workshop that was held in 2015, and that led to the formation of the task team. And um, when I came across to do this protocol drive full time, we made the decision that we needed an entity. A task team's wonderful, but it's a very loose organisation. So the task team remains there as a broader guiding unit. And underneath that, the implementation arm of the task team is South African Equine Health and Protocols. The first thing we did there was um, we've successfully separated the long-term research of the ERC with um, Professor Guthrie and Professor Sana from a focused and dedicated protocols drive. We've only recently started that, being this year. Um, the directors of that are Chris Van Niekirk, um, Mike de Kock, Lee Scribanti, myself, and we've just expanded the board there and taken on and now as directors elect Mark Green, Brian Finch, Mick Goss, and Dr. John Grewer. So it's a, it's a very representative board. Um, as I said, it's an implementation arm of the task team. And we've decided that we need to just focus on protocols. That's the sole focus of this organization. And part of that, you need to understand for international audits, anything like that, they're actually coming to audit our government. Not this farm or that farm or the TBA or Pumalela Gold Circle, our government. And we've managed to form a very solid public-private partnership with our government as well. We've actually recently signed a MOU where a lot of tasks have been delegated to our organisation regarding movement control, vaccine permissions within the control zones. So in partnership with government, we are now helping them and they're helping us to move this forward. Our current relationship with government is something we've never had before. That's fantastic. And it's a non-profit company. How do you deal with the funding of this? Um, Funding-wise, it's got a broad range of both institutional and private funders. And looking at the videos this morning, it's, it's absolutely marvellous what's going on with these quarantine stations. They've really upped their game and they've, they've got to know that they are, are non-African horse sickness carriers before they leave that quarantine station. Definitely. And, you know, as I've said before, the advent of the PCR test is something that was a game changer. You know, the EU's now accepted PCR testing. They're accepting the fact that you can do lockdown quarantine, as was shown in the original risk assessment study that was done a couple of years ago. Well, you've got a wonderful new setup here in Somerset West. You've got your office, and then, of course, you've got your offices for the vets, and they're doing their thing. And then you've got the data. The passports have all got to be perfect and up to date. One of the biggest things that you'll find around the world going forward for disease control is traceability. Um, Dr. Gru has developed a wonderful traceability system. It's constantly being improved upon. We're rolling out this year a number of new things that will make the movement control situation for the thoroughbred people much easier and dedicated thoroughbred unit for movement control. Because you have to understand here, we're now responsible for movement control of equines within the control zones, not just thoroughbreds, all horses because as far as anybody else in the world is concerned, horses are horses. And that traceability and control of movement is something that has been worked on very hard by the team, and it's bearing fruit. We've now got a traceability system that we're proud to show anybody in the world. Yes, it was lovely watching the video, seeing all those different equine animals in South Africa, and yes, of course, it's not just for horse racing. But now, the timing, looking at your brochure, the timing, you have come on absolutely leaps and bounds in a short period of time. You know, there was solid science there before, and that was an, one of the main reasons for putting all this together, was to couple the scientific technical drive with the political drive. You know, I keep saying this, I stole this statement from Mike de Kock. When we first started working together, he sat there and he said, at the end of the day, protocols are between governments. And we had to get our government on side, which we've now done. I think one of our greatest achievements after getting that done was when we were in Hong Kong for the International Movement of Horses Committee and then further discussions in South Korea in December, the South African Department of Agriculture's Head of Animal Health accompanied us. So that's the level of participation that they are now putting into this. And it's just 
been wonderful. I think that we're really making solid progress and I expect more big things this year. Yeah, the work you've been doing is phenomenal and obviously that's involved an awful lot of travelling for you as well. It, it has, you know, we, when, when we started, Dr Gruer and I have met with most of the regulators in our targeted countries and formed relationships there. We're now in the process of moving our focus, not away from that, but to add industry awareness campaigns. In 2013, South Africa failed an EU audit. The fact of the matter is, South Africa deserved to fail that 2013 audit. The work that has been done since then, now coupled with the government partnership and the international awareness, we need to show the world that they don't need to fear us. This is not the South Africa of 2013. And we now do have a sustainable, safe pathway to offer. And there's another audit coming up, which will hopefully be um, successful. Very much so. You know, we're, we're very confident about that. We are so confident that we really believe that we are ready for this. We haven't just taken that at our own word. We've had international experts from Europe and the United States come on two different occasions now to conduct pre-audits. And there's still a lot of work to be done. We're aware of that, but it's targeted, focused and prioritised. We know where the shortcomings are in South Africa and we have a plan to fix them. Adrian, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us this morning. I know you're a very busy man. There's lots of travelling planned and you're working very, very hard on this project. You're making great strides and we're all very proud of you and looking forward to making even bigger strides by 2019. Well, it's always wonderful to speak to Adrian Todd. It's lovely to be in his new office here in Somerset West. We've got to, had a great update this morning. He really is making huge progress and South Africa looks like we're going to be moving very shortly. Glencott's and Trains at Woodhill Racing Estate, situated in the Pole Wildlands, an ideal location to pre-train and train equine athletes. The 30 hectare estate is a fully equipped professional training property with large green paddocks, hot walkers, two tracks, starting stalls and Glenn has access to the Melkhorst Beach where he regularly transports the horses to enjoy the cold therapeutic Cape Ocean. Throughout the last decade Glenn has produced multiple graded winners including Badger's Gift, the TBA Paddock Stakes Grade 1, Big City Life, Vodacom Durban July, Lady Windermere won the South African Philly Sprint as well as the Garden Province Stakes. Princess Victoria won the Allen Robinson Championship and the Garden Province Stakes. Glenn currently has Gold Standard, a striking son of champion sire Trippy, and an outstanding three-year-old son of Dynasty, Eyes Wide Open. Glenn Cotson bases his principles on a good work ethic with the backing of a professional team attention to detail, family values and good friends. Soft calling rain, put it clear. Soft calling rain, won the SA Nursery by three.
New Turf Carriers has been in long distance transport since 1995 and pride themselves in excellent service. The bottom line is, New Turf Carriers take your horse from door to door with pride, passion and punctuality. Kentucky-born Royal Mo is the first son of Uncle Mo, champion sire in the US, to stand in South Africa and he joins the top ranks of stallions at Clava Flaystud. As a racehorse, he, he ran a pair of seconds in his first two starts over sprints. He then broke his maiden when he first went over a mile. Straight out the maidens, he managed to, to reel off a group win um, over the mile as well. And then obviously, big performance um, when he ran third in that group one, the derby. Royal Mo, and here comes Gormley, followed by Iliad, and reached the world in Battle of Midway, trying to stave off the Moss pair. Royal Mo and Gormley battling strongly. Gormley looming into the lead now. Gormley takes the lead and Gormley wins the set. Anita Derby. Grade one winner, always in charge, is the son of the late Captain L and is currently being syndicated for stud. We take a look at what the syndication has to offer. Always in charge is on the outside finding more. Down the inside, Seattle Singer. Always in charge is going to win it though. Well, that's a wrap for this edition of Breeding to Win. Just quickly taking a chance to wish all the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. And hopefully you got spoiled by all your loved ones. Well, that's a wrap. 
from the Breeding to Win team until the 27th of May. Join us then for our next Breeding to Win show. From myself, Julie Alexander, good night. Chance Farms product stakes.